I'm Jonas Wingegaard and welcome to the Cycling Day. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. The transfer season is one of the most frantic parts of the cycling season and this year has been no exception. And in today's video we'll look at the 10 best transfers to come out of the 2024 transfer season. And yes, there is a disclaimer here that Ineos Grandiers have not announced their full transfers as the team looks pretty bare when you look at the 2024 squad, but more on that in another video. And if you're new here, why not subscribe to the channel and check out our overview of the transfer market on our website as well down in the link below. Anyway, coming in at number 10, we have Victor Lafay. Victor Lafay is the first one on our list, who was a surprise winner of a stage win at this year's Tour de France, ending the long drought for Cofidis that had stood since 2008. And in the Tour, Lafay was also the only rider able to keep up to Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vingor early on on a small climb. However, since the Tour, Lafay became a bit of a hot property with rumors to Ineos Grenadiers, but ultimately final destination was AG2 Citroen, who are incidentally losing the retiring Greg Van Avermaet so freeing up a bit of their budget and that has meant that they've been able to offer the Frenchman a 2 million euro a year contract. His role in AG2R could potentially be a bit similar to that of Kofidis, working with Benoit Kosnofar in the Hillier Classics and really getting his own opportunities when it comes to the Tour or even a Giro so he could potentially add another Grand Tour stage to his Palmares and maybe a few more points in the bank as well for AG2R in the relegation battle but certainly an exciting move in the French cycling sphere. Next on our list we have Jonathan Milan who opened up his 2023 season by winning stage 2 of the Saudi Tour before he made his Grand Tour debut at the Giro d'Italia, won a stage as well as being up there in many of the sprints and taking the overall points classification in the process. The Italian is not just limited to the road as he also won the European individual pursuit title in Gretchen as well. He is of course changing out Bahrain and Victorious for Little Trek. What his role will be within Little Trek should be quite interesting as he is a sprinter and he was instead also sprinting again Little Trek's Mass Pillows and at the Giro so perhaps there is a bit of an issue if they're targeting the same races but at 22 years old he certainly is a serious talent for the squad and quite a coup for them as well. Now coming to number eight and here we have Daniel Martinez who is forever associated with that incredible help he did for Egan Bernal in the 2021 Giro d'Italia. However, it is time for a new chapter for the Colombian climber as he will be leaving Ineos Grandiers in favor of Bora Hansgrohe. Bora have in the last few seasons transitioned a bit more to a GC squad with notable Royal Salts in the Grand Tours. And so Daniel Martinez seems like a good addition Martinez had a good start to the 2023 season, winning the Welter Algarve, but from then on, it was not the kind of season that produced anything spectacular compared to his other achievements in his career. So perhaps a change of environment could be good for the Colombian, and he may be able to ride for himself in some races, but is definitely going to be an incredible climbing domestique for the likes of Lazov, Autobrooks, or even Jide Hindley. So not a bad addition by any shots for Bora. Coming in at number seven, and here we have our first pro-continental move, and that is Andreas Lechnesson, who is from Norway, who will be returning to Uno X after three seasons with Team DSM. This was a surprise move after the successful 2023 Giro d'Italia campaign from the Norwegian. The 24-year-old picked up the Malia Rosa after finishing second on stage four and held it all the way till the time trial stage on stage nine. The Norwegian did manage to hold his place in the top 10 ultimately finishing eighth overall so not bad at all so has this move come as he knows you will get more opportunities at uno x compared with dsm who are signing a big profile sprinter but more about that later and given the number of invites that uno x get as well there is a big opportunity for lechnison to lead his first ever team at a tour de france further to this Uno X have their medium term goal of making it to the world tour so who knows but it's certainly an exciting move back for the Norwegian and the Norwegian squad have really got a good rider. Coming in at number six and this is our first and only American rider on the list Matteo Jorgensen who will be changing from Movistar to Jumbo Visma after three seasons with that Spanish outfit. Jorgensen did well early on in the year winning the Tour of Oman after a stage win on stage three before he had success again at the Tour de Romandy finishing second in the time trial and fifth on the mountain stage placing him second on the overall podium behind Adam Yates and at the Tour 
Tour de France, he was very aggressive and present in many of the breakaways, almost winning the Puy de Dome stage after a daring move, but was ultimately caught before the finish and finished fourth. Hopefully at Jumbo Visma, he will be given opportunities to develop and not just used as a domestique, but sadly, only time will tell. Now coming into number five, and maybe this rider should be a bit further up, it is Fabio Jakobsen who will be leaving Sudal Quickstep after six seasons with the team and countless victories to his account as well for them, following the team's ever-growing focus on Remco Venepoel. Jakobsen's 2023 season has been a mixed bag with seven victories, but nothing in the Tour de France, unfortunately, after an early crash really hampered him. DSM, of course, are a team that could definitely use a fast man after they have lost Sam Wellsford and have got pedigree in the discipline. And arguably, Fabio Jakobsen is the faster man, even faster than Dainese as well. So Fabio Jakobsen will love the opportunity to get another crack at the Tour de France with him as the primary focal point for the team. Pavel Sivakov is the fourth rider on our list and has always had great potential after he won the under 23 Giro Italia and even finished ninth overall in the Giro in 2019 at an early age, but has since been used as a domestique at Ineos, but he has managed to squeeze in a uh, overall victory at the Tour of the Alps and the Vuelta of Burgos. And late in the season in 2023, he's really shown some strong form in the Italian one day races, even taking a win. The Frenchman, however, will be changing out Ineos Grandiers in favor of World Tour rivals UAE Team Emirates. And it seems Ineos Grandiers have not learned the lesson from last year, where they let Adam Yates go to UAE, and we all know what happened there. This will definitely be an exciting move for both Sibikov and UAE, and hopefully, he will be given more opportunities for himself and not merely used as a domestique but it is of course a very competitive roster at UAE and even more so for the Grand Tour selection leadership. Coming in at number three and maybe I am a bit biased here considering I'm Danish but I have chosen Magnus Court Nielsen who will be stepping down from the World Tour team EF Education Easy Post to join Uno X. This is an exciting move for the squad as Court brings a wealth of experience and success as he has won Grand Tour stages in all the three Grand Tours and he can be a vital component in more invites for the team as well. Manus Court is an all-rounder with a good sprint on him, good on the hilly stages and can pack a good time trial on his day as well. So it could be a very successful points grab in 2024 for him as the team look to battle for that world tour place. And of course, he will also be linking up with plenty of fellow Scandinavians. So all around, this is a very good move, I think, for both parties. Before we go into our top two picks, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and comment down below what's been your favorite transfer as well. And if you haven't already, check out our transfer talk series as well with all the recent gossip. Second on our list is one of my favorite riders in the current peloton, Mikael Lando, who had a great Vuelta a España, showing glimpses of the old Mikael Lando by finishing fifth overall, his best result at a Vuelta. However, in 2024, he will be helping Remco Benepol at Sodal Quickstep, we assume, and he will bring a wealth of experience for the Belgian superstar. And maybe Lander will be given his own opportunities at certain points during the season, maybe a welter or a Giro, who knows. Nevertheless, this move really strengthens the overall mountain train of Sudal Quickstep as they continue to commit to the Remco Evenempel project. The contract for Lander is for two seasons. Lander has already shown previously in his career that he can do this role as he helped Chris Froome to clinch the 2017 Tour de France title while himself finishing in fourth place. So Sodal Quickstep are hopefully hoping that the Spaniard rider could do something similar for Remco at next year's Tour de France. Now coming in to number one and here we have the 2020 Giro d'Italia champion who has also left Ineos Grenadiers and this is of course Theo Gegenhardt who had a bit of a resurgence in 2023 in the Giro d'Italia as he looked very strong, even finishing high up in the time trial and sitting pretty in the top three before he unfortunately crashed out. He will be changing colors to the colorful Lidl Trek and this is a three-year contract and it is an exciting one as they 
look to strengthen the GC part of that team with the likes of Patrick Conrad and Carlos Verona also heading to the team. This will really strengthen the mountain aspect of Little Trek and Teo and could certainly have the potential to have the sole leadership at a Grand Tour or at least shared with Mass Pilsen at the Tour de France, but who knows. By all accounts, this is a very exciting move and we could see a top season from the Brit next year with a new challenge ahead of him. Who knows if Theo Gegenhardt will do something here. He certainly has proved himself as a consistent rider in the past and really showed some good form early on in the 2023 season. But it's an exciting move for both parties. That's basically it for this video. Make sure to comment down below which move you think is the best transfer of this season. And if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And of course, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you around.